Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting, inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, share, and don't forget to comment. We want to hear from you. All right. So growing up, a lot of us remember our puppets. We had sock puppets, we had fake hand puppets, we had puppets that we saw on TV, and we had puppets that we made ourselves. But do you remember when puppets changed? Sesame Street? Come on, y'all know Jim Henson. No, I don't have Jim Henson with me today, but who I do have knows a little bit about Jim Henson. Y'all, please welcome Anthony Michael Stokes. Hello, Anthony. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me. This is interesting to me because, like I said in the intro, a lot of us grew up with puppets, but mm -hmm. puppets changed over time. I mean, and, and it's so weird. So first of all, tell us your connection with Jim Henson. Okay. So, you know, like you were saying earlier, we all have this connection to, you know, we all, we all remember kind of puppets when we were children. And then, of course, you know, Sesame Street comes along and that kind of shifts things. So I was one of those kids that was raised on Sesame Street, you know, growing up. But I always loved Jim Henson's creatures, all of them. Uh, I was a Fraggle Rock kid, I the Muppet Babies, everything. And uh, so I, at an early age, was very uh, inspired by him as a man and as like a, as a, as an artist. Mm -hmm. And so as I got older, is that where we're leading to? <laughs> we're leading to that part. We want to talk about your award that you got from the Jim Henson Foundation. Yes. Uh, so this year I was awarded the, let's see if I can get this right. I am the Jim Henson Foundation Artist in Residency at the Eugene O'Neill Center. There we go. There it is. That is a whole mouthful. Now, exactly what does that mean? <laughs> Did you just win a boat? I, I don't know exactly. I wish. No. So so what, what happened is actually, um, it started a few years ago. So uh, with a piece that is called The Scarecrow, which is what I won, won the um, the award for. Okay. Uh, I got a workshop grant from the foundation to workshop the show. And then in that process, while I was doing that, they gave they uh how, how do I say they encouraged me to apply for the production grant the full production grant um the the workshop grant was for three thousand the production grant is for seven thousand dollars and then while I was in the process of just preparing that mm -hmm. they asked me to apply for the <laughs> residency which is kind of like the top one, you know? So if it's like the crown, I don't know, what do they, they call it? Like the, you get all three and you like, you know, it's like- Oh, the, the trifecta. <laughs> yeah, you, you know? And so I didn't, I wanted all three, but I didn't expect to get them right on top of each other. Um, Cause it made the work that I had to do just to get them like triple the the work just to get be a be considered a part of the process. Right. And well, so, hold on, I'm going to stop you here really quick because you said the work that you're going to have to do to get these. So- there's a lot of work involved, not only in, in puppetry in and of itself, but in getting some of these grants and awards and things. So yes. just kind of shifting a little bit, who makes your puppets? And are they called puppets? They are. Uh, my my characters uh, that I build from my uh, workshop, uh, Kesto Creatures, uh, they're technically they're Kesto creatures, but they're puppets. You know, Jim Henson had the Muppets. Those characters, you know, those are you know trademarked by him. And the, the these the if there's something coming from my workshop and I'm building it, it's technically a Kesto creature. Once it moves I too. Okay, see, I did not know that. So growing up, I grew up with um, what was the lady's name that she had the little sock puppet, and it was a, a lamb, lambkin. Cherry Lewis and lamb chop. Lamb chop. Yes. That's right. I remember that so much. And and the, and the song that never ends. And it's a song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because it's...
it is an earworm, y'all. So I'm not going to get you started, but it's a whole right, thing. If we start, we can't stop. Exactly. That's what it said in the song. So you're making these puppets. Did you start out making like little sock puppets or things like that? Because you said earlier you you fell in love with with puppets and the Muppets and the the Fraggle mm -hmm. was amazing. I think my favorite one at the time was the Dark Crystal. Do you remember that? I do, I do. And this work is slightly, you can see in the Scarecrow, the, the, the piece I'm really working on right now, it, you can see it be infused with these, these inspirations that, and there's a character, the witch character in it. She's more of a humanoid character that comes to life with two puppet um, puppeteers. And she's based slightly off of uh, like a dark, she's inspired by the Dark Crystal. Yeah. And so, because I... Was it, it was so neat when I got older and I looked at the dark crystal and I thought this is kind of creepy <laughs> it is and when you realize there's no humans there's no human actors there's just puppets yeah, there's puppeteers. yeah. yeah that's amazing so Anthony what else do you do because I know you are an actor I know that you've been out and and done some things can you just tell us a little bit about what else you're, you've been doing yeah and it's really interesting because the puppetry is kind of bringing it all together for me at this this moment in my life mm -hmm. um but trained i you know i have a bfa in music theater bfa in dance performance from utep and uh then i just recently got my master's in education and so i act i sing i dance i choreograph i write i have a book that's out there we're, we're trying to we're gonna figure that out but uh, you know, I've I've always been artistically kind of gifted. It's just, it's just a gifting that the, the Lord has given me from a very young age. So I know you were talking earlier about, you know, did I start off making sock puppets? And I was never the kid that made a sock puppet or even drew a stick figure. Like from a young age, I was like, no, that's not going to work. But like, we need to fill it out. And so, and so oh, even wow. at a young age, I would build when I, I would build puppets from like stuffed animals and then okay. re, re kind of re um repurpose them because that's basically what they are they're dolls in a way you know they were manipulating and so i would repurpose them to make the mouth move and you know add wow. long socks with stuffing to make arms and then yeah i was a thrift store kid at a very young age oh gosh it's still one of my favorite places <laughs> ever oh my gosh so like so you said this was literally your gift at a very young age at what point did you know hmm, there's something here I need to explore. It didn't really happen until 2013. I was in Korea, South Korea. I should <laughs> specify that, I guess. <laughs> and uh, and I, was, I was working there um, as a performer, as, an as what's called an edutainer. And I was, that's when I started building puppets on my own. And okay. started, babe, you know, I took a blanket and was like, I think I can make a character out of this. And it was from that moment that I, you know, I had just kind of a natural gifting for the manipulation of it since I'd grown up. And that's when I started to kind of take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on in Korea, when I, I was there a year and then I came back. And when I came back, I literally came back into the city. I was out of, based out of New York at the time into playing a role in the New York Fringe, International Fringe Festival. And my role was in a man but he was possessed by a puppet character. And so I had to kind of do two characters at once and I had to duet with myself, it was a whole thing. And it was from that moment on that I started to pursue it professionally and started training myself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and Jim Henson, the name just kept popping up and then I kept getting opportunities to, to That's excel. Amazing, that is crazy. So you're also a high school teacher, right? Yes, I currently am also a high school teacher. I, I teach at, uh, can I say what, where I teach? Yes, you can. Okay. Jefferson Silva High School uh, in El Paso. And I also I also went there. So it's really interesting to come back. I went there, you know, 27 years ago. But, <laughs> you know, I was able to return return in, tw right when the pandemic hit, actually. Mm -hmm. I came back to, from New York right at that time. Wow. And I got the job as a theater director there. And I've been there. That is amazing. And you've also won a couple of awards from the school too, haven't you? I have, weirdly enough, they're right behind me. I uh, In 2018, I was teacher of the year, campus teacher of the year at Brown Middle School. Mm -hmm. And that was where I started teaching. That's where I started my teaching career. And it, okay. I have just the fondest memories of mm -hmm. learning what I was doing at that point there. And 
there was some, there was some, uh, I had to learn a lot of lessons. <laughs> you yeah, know? Hey, nobody like we, starts out as a, as a professional. <laughs> right, right. But I was still, you know, rewarded for my dedication to the, to the campus. And then when I came back and, you know, started at Jefferson, I got teacher of the year there as well. And then I was, I got to go further and was a uh, top five finalist for teacher of the year for EPISD. Wow. Just that so. is awesome. That, yeah. I mean, like I said, there is work involved in all that you do. So as yeah. you're teaching and performing and building and workshopping and all those other things, what do you do in your downtime as if you had any? <laughs> uh, I try to, I have to, it's a little bit of a forced thing to have to force myself into downtime um, because there's, there is so much going on. And, you know, my, most of my professions are other people's hobbies. Yeah. They're things people do for fun, but here I am doing them. They are these things I love and I do for fun, but I'm also making careers out of them, you know? So it's, it's, you know, if I, it's hard to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my downtime is very strange. It's usually me looking, trying to look at something on TV or online. It's really just makes me laugh in a really stupid way to get <laughs> out of the my brain for a little bit. You know? Yeah, I think everybody needs that. So now, Anthony, as you're teaching and doing all the things that you do, what would you say to some young person or even somebody a little more seasoned, if you will, that wanted to get into puppetry? Where would you tell them to start? Well, luckily technology is a great, we live in the age of technology, right? So you can find a lot of, you can learn a lot of stuff from the internet, you know, uh, good and bad. And I think, you know, I would start there. YouTube, there's a lot of great, a lot of these puppeteers that I've trained with or that I've worked with or that I've looked up to, there's stuff on YouTube of how to go about it, you know? Um, also, you if you're interested in it, you can also start by being involved in the other arts and that often can kind of lead you to it. Wow, that's interesting. Um, the other stuff, the acting and stuff that kind of led me to being a puppeteer yeah. and being able to even be excel at it in any way. I mean, that that to me is just so interesting. So as you're building your Kesto, your Kesto creatures and building your name, your brand, your reputation and everything, do you also help other people get into the business or do you do workshops yourself for other folks? Yeah, we're getting to that point and I'm getting to that point in my career where it's starting to be like, okay, you have to, I have to have certain things together for, you know, performances at the museum, performance, you know, workshops and stuff. So I'm starting to get that together. I have taught them before, mm -hmm. but right now we're really in the process of, process of trying to, the scarecrows being yeah. ready to kind of fly as a production. And we don't really know where that journey is going to lead me. So, you know, that's where I'm at right now with it. Um, but I'm also always open if someone just contacts me about doing it. I'm like, if I have, if I can look at my schedule and be like, oh, sure, I can whip something together and let's do it, you know? That's awesome. So Anthony, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, where could they find you? AMS.vision is my website. Okay. Uh, and okay. you just go there and then it has like all my, all the ways to find me. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I, I just think that's so interesting, but don't worry y'all. If y'all did not get that email that address or that website, we're going to put it all down in the description below. And don't forget while you're here, subscribe, like, and share. And if you or someone, you know, has an inspiring story or a topic we absolutely have to talk about or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. Anthony, my friend, before I let you go, <laughs> we got to play a game. Okay. <laughs> so this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Tea. Prince or Michael Jackson? Prince. I'm surprised you, you weren't sure right there. For I'm not sure still. <laughs> but you're going with Prince. Got oh, it. Prince. Work from home or go to the office? 
Work from home. Yeah, me too. Romantic mm -hmm. comedy or action adventure? Action adventure. Okay. Fight, flight, or flee? Fight. Uh, I'm really <laughs> shocked. But I don't know how I feel about that right now. That was somewhat surprising. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give up easily. <laughs> okay. I ain't mad at you. Do it yourself or hire a professional? Um, I would say do it myself. Okay. And then <laughs> what, call the professional later, whatever? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it doesn't quite work out. There you go. Okay. Bite your tongue or clap back? I wish I could just give you a this or that. I'm trying. I'm trying. Ooh. You I've learned. Both. <laughs> I'm, listen, it's because I feel like as I've gotten older, you know, I just turned... Mm -hmm. 40 a couple of weeks ago. Okay, and I feel like I've learned, I, I got to where I'm like, oh, I learned how to do one when I need to and do the other one when I have to. Uh, so as the situation calls for it, I like it. All right. Yeah. Large crowds or small groups? Small groups. Slow dance or shake that thing? A slow dance. But you're, you're like, wait, I see myself dancing. Yeah, never I, mind. Well, because, you know, I can do them both, but I just. Yeah, <laughs> you just prefer. Okay. In peanut butter, creamy or crunchy? Crunchy. Oh, I'm surprised about that. And if you were an animal, basically, what would be your spirit animal and why? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Ooh, I thought about this one a few times, weirdly, on my own. Okay. And because there's a few, but I know I need to go with one. I know, I know. I just like options. Okay. Um, I would say I'm going to go with the one that's on my arm. It's an ant. Okay. It's a, a worker ant. And it's connected to my name, obviously. Uh, but as I've grown, I've always noticed the, uh, the kind of qualities that ants possess Mm -hmm. uh, being hard workers and strong and the way they're looking out for who they're looking out for. And, um, it's it it fits with kind of who I am as a person, okay. and so I mean enough that it's tattooed on my arm. Yeah, there uh, you go. I would. You know. I've never seen anybody tattoo an ant on their arm, but <laughs> you now make you made it make sense. That is really cool. Yeah. Anthony, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh no, it's my joy, my pleasure. And don't worry, y'all. There's more of this later next week on Faith on Friday presents. Thank you.